Okay, I know it's not the greatest, fantastic um, opening scene with all the graphics and uh, great technology. It's me in a picture with a room, kind of simplified. Um, yeah, so some people get more advanced technology to use, but sometimes it's not just about the high definition impacting technology, but sometimes the quality that you can have, even in the simple things like a bit of um, a bit of water. You know, if you're in a desert. Um, then yeah definitely you'd rather have water uh, than you know diamonds and riches and a remote control with high definition television okay so a couple of things on my mind today guys and thanks for listening and staying with me and going through me this, this journey with me uh, it means a lot uh, thank you Jesus thank you Heavenly Father um, in Jesus name Amen thank you Holy Spirit you're amazing love you uh, you're so adorable you're lovely okay, and holy right okay so a few things. Uh, a message came up on my screen, and I was looking at like Abraham. I mean, change his name to Abraham, Abraham to Abraham. Blessed be his name, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Um, and uh, it was about when you know he was accredited to him righteousness by having his faith and trust in Jesus. That was one topic that came up. And when I was looking at that, another video came up, and um, which was about um, was it Abraham and his wife Sarah, and then it was like, um, hey, is it Hagar? Or Hagar, or whatever, or the, her servant girl, and she, like they didn't believe they could have a child. So she's like, you know, you can go and sleep with my slave, slave and slave girl, and then, you know, you can have a child with her. And it's like, well, somehow, like, some people think, you know, how can that be righteous and loving? And you know, how come sometimes God's people can, you know, like just sleep with, use people as a commodity, as like use their bodies, and when we're meant to offer our bodies as a worship to to God, how does that work? Um, I think because another message came out saying that uh, some people try to hire a wild mountain girl. Uh, some rich people hired a mountain girl so they can, you know, um, that's one message that came out so that they could have some kind of frivolous fun, you know, with a, with a girl. And you know, it doesn't matter because the child of Hagar will not be accounted to her the promises or the blessings which were accredited to Abraham and Sarah with their legitimate child. So basically they was able to have um, intimacy uh, of two becoming one flesh but with a slave girl and then so she got used uh, their child and family line didn't get um, blessed and then they're just used and then the other family line are like kind of then blessed and um, get more riches I don't know how that works it's up to God he's a sovereign God uh, but there is a new testament a new covenant um, you know where Jesus came to make all things new um, so he fulfilled the Old Testament with you know with the laws not that they all passed away um, but he fulfilled them and like I think it's Dr. Frank Turek was saying that those laws are still were meant to adhere to them you know like love your neighbor do not steal uh, honor your mommy your dad where as possible because uh, I, I personally believe you know, that, that we are called to honor um, you know if you are born with like real family members you know like some people maybe have relatives but you don't have that intimacy or legitimate kind of like family relationship where might people just treat you as you, you exist um, you know where you might have relatives but there's no connection there it's like you're just maybe treated as however uh, doesn't mean you can't try and honor them but I just my personal opinion I believe that you should obviously agree with what God says but he also says you know that uh, there's somewhere in scripture where he says he came to call division uh, with some members you know like uh, mother against daughter and uh, son against his dad or you know there's, there's division because there are some people that want to follow Jesus and sometimes people in your life that don't want you to be around Jesus like you'll try and talk about Jesus and they'll say don't want to hear about it be quiet and they'll use their authoritative um position if they are a, a family relative uh, to tell you you know not to go to church or they could be really really toxic um you know like maybe you're feeling like lord i want to serve you today i want to do what is good i want to grow in righteousness and patience and love and courage and i want to have a good day i want to be loving and caring and kind and you wake up and maybe some of the relatives that you have in your around in your life uh, could be detrimental to your mental health your spiritual health your physical health you know that those like could be very negative people just like what are you doing that for you shouldn't do that you haven't done that. what you where are you going there for well you know this you know and they'll bombard you um with the way that they can talk to you um or try to be disagreeable or anytime you're trying to be positive or something like that and it's just like and you're trying to produce fruit for the lord um and it's just like you can find it very challenging so I, I believe you can still honor those people 
Um, but it doesn't always mean that you have to, although sometimes you're forced into being around those people, like you haven't got anywhere else to live, um, or the, the um, abuse, you haven't got, it's like you're, you're, you're trapped. And it's like, it's a form of persecution, because um, it not only affects your mental health or your well-being, but it can also affect your spiritual health and growth, because uh, there are areas where we're called to develop fruits of the spirit, which is like love, peace, joy, kindness, gentleness. And if you're being there and you're trying to grow and produce this fruit for your Lord, but then you've got these people that are niggling and nagging and attacking, it's like they're trying to, as much as you're trying to grow, they're trying to like plant seeds of weeds that are going to kind of come around and try and crowd out your growth. Um, so the Ten Commandments are there, but I believe also, you know, Jesus also understands the scenario that sometimes you might have people in your life that are not healthy for you to be around. Because that, as you as a Christian, like he even says, you know, where there's two, one will be taken. He even says he came to cause division against some parents and their uh, children. Some some parents, I uh, well, I've seen, I don't know about you, I mean, the way they treat their children, or like the language they use, or like the way they're just, um, I mean, and then there's other general people who seem so loving and kind, and then they can't seem to get pregnant or have children. And it's like, we're just living in an upside down world. It's like those who have don't deserve and those who you think, you know, oh, why doesn't the Lord bless them? With, you know, and it seems like life is so hard for them to have children, but then he maybe puts them in a position to adopt. You just don't know. I mean, who can understand his ways? I mean, his ways are higher than our ways. Um, so that was something I was just came all from that. There you go. Had that on a plate. Try and filter through that. Okay. Ding, ding, ding. I'm trying to take bite size chunks and trying to work through that. Um, but I'll always go with what God says. He's right. I'm just a human. So just whatever he says. Um, and then there's another video came up, which I'm going to be thinking about all this kind of stuff at the moment and try and consolidate and do it. I'm learning how to maybe write sermons and do like stuff that might help encourage or kind of help to dissect the words. Um, and it says dividing the truth. Oh, yeah. Uh, dividing the truth correctly or something. We're trying our best. So we can try and do that together. It would be amazing. Um, uh, kind of love you know we've got to build each other up and edify edification right you mean god is for us you know sin is the enemy and that's what jesus has defeated so we keep coming back to the cross we keep coming and trusting in jesus that he came to sanctify us to make us holy become perfect throw off the the old nature the old is gone the new has come uh, there's a lot of people out there that are just you know they're loitering in the streets you know some of them are demonic you know jesus said that you know he planted seed uh, and the, the devil planted weeds so there's also you need know, to try and stump your growth so not everybody might be like oh they're homeless or oh, they're this you have to use discernment because some of them are, are by the enemy and they're just there literally you want to wake up with a beautiful view or do something positive and you know it's like they're like 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 a leech or something or like a weed like trying to just you know this trying to block your blessings so you just pray right now in the name of jesus come in agreement that he, he like moses he just washes them away and just you know you can uh, stay on the narrow path with jesus even if you're challenged put on your body armor of christ um so yeah so working through that on, on that truth thing another video came up and i think it was by a guy who i, I actually really like and his name is um oh, what's it alan parr and I like David Lynn as well. He's pretty cool because he's like such a, he's so like patient. He's got such a fruit of the spirit. He's like, mm-hmm, with his microphone. He's like, mm-hmm, uh -huh. with his microphone. Isn't he incredible? I think he's amazing. Anyway, so he's like the black guy on the LGBT stuff and he's trying to help people with sexual morality. And he's talking about this, um, make it about a previous pastor was promoting LGBT you know, sexual immorality conduct. Obviously, we know it's a battle of the flesh and the spirit. So it's not just homosexuals that struggle with sexual immorality. We know that sexual immorality, and it's not the normal of how the institution that God created a male to be with a female and stop together. That's how you make a family unit. Um, so sometimes Satan can use those temptations, and you know, with a lot of um, uh, some of these TV programs, it almost promotes it. You've got they'll use famous sports figures to say, you know, or, or people who once had like I don't know, was it Philip Schofield? God blessed him with a beautiful wife and children, and, and he's given all that up for to, for temptations of uh, lusting after your own kind. So I mean, it's not just him. You've got um, or cricketers. It's like what have they been watching? Where is that seduction? What what is it? What the, what what is it that's led you astray from uh, from all the blessings and normality that God's given you and the fear of the lord like your body is not your own it's given to you as a gift um and you're going to be just we all are how you know and god is a just god you know um 
So yeah, dealing with that, um, sexual morality, heterosexual people can also be sexually immoral. You know, they're going out maybe up to Brighton or just or your local town or hooking up on uh, sites like Tinder or whatever or online and going on these dates and having sex outside of marriage. Anything outside the institution of marriage is sexual immorality. You could be even be watching, going to certain sites. Um, I think it's you know called pornos, uh, which is Greek, which means actually means sexual immorality it's one of the devil's weapons it's maybe trying to give it to you for free and they're doing that because the devil doesn't want you to become holy and to get into heaven he wants you to go to hell he is an enemy of god and he's had years and years he's been around a lot longer than you and i have and he's been knows where your soft spots or your weaknesses are so you must put on your body armor of christ your breastplate protect your heart righteousness holiness like um your helmet you know it's going to attack your thoughts you know like today i literally went out my house and like three rather attractive uh lady i'm a single guy three pretty much you know men are designed to find females attractive right so you've got to also control that but then you also don't want to be like start finding your own kind attractive either because that's just it's odd it's that you god designed a male to be with a female but you know it's females you need to have to maybe how you're dressed you know it says do not be a stumbling block to your brother or sister so men you know whether it's you pumping or flexing your muscles you know women might be designed to be like oh protector he can hold me in his arms or whatever i don't know or you might be uh, attracted to somebody's personality or you know it's okay to fall in love and like someone but we're called not to lust so you know sometimes girls you know, if you're someone at clothing or, you know, flavor you know, and clothing doesn't really help. But, you know, if you go to church, you're, you're going to church to not be tested and tricked and allured. You're going there to spend time with God, to grow, or maybe you've got some areas and weaknesses in your life. And you go to church because you generally want to be close to Father God and you want to learn how to be righteous. You don't go there, you know, like you can turn up a church and then someone might gossip. It says it can spread like wildfire oh what a disease and it's like you, you gossip about these these people but you've done very own things yourself and, ex, and expected grace and love and to be acceptance but then someone comes you're coming to a church unawares and they could have like traps set for you or you're being tested and you're just going in there with as you are like wanting to come to christ and come to grow and you know you, you uh yeah, and you can have, you know, girls turning up in, you know, practically seeing their bra straps, flavoured, short skirts, touching, you know, doing little uh, things. Or someone will gossip and say, yeah, I know that guy, he's, you know, he used to be like this. You know, and then, they'll, like, you know, you, and then that, since that gossip goes through, then they won't allow you into that group. And then you're left outside. And what a mess, what a danger you've left that person to be in. And so when we're here, I believe, to, as a rescue mission, we're called to be disciples and disciples, people to make disciples so that we can be saved and rescued and come into that freeing relationship with Jesus. Uh, because he came to set the captive free, not to condemn us, but to save us. Uh, he even came to say, say that which he didn't plant. He also said, um, you know, he came to reap what he did not, um, did not sow. Uh, you know, so Jesus is so amazingly full of grace. So anyway, back to Alan. Uh, so that was David Lynn talking about pastors and sexual morality. I don't agree with either whether you are homosexual or heterosexual. Sex outside of marriage between a male and a female is uh, sexual immorality. And also, if you're a single guy and you're just watching certain sites, that is also sexual immorality because you're abusing your own body. Uh, and it's also having perverse thoughts. And that stuff is just watching men and women abuse their bodies, making certain words which are good and wholesome and trying to make them filthy and have an unclean a connotation to them so when you hear those words it's like diluting them it's like it's a mess stay away from it it's filth you know be pure be innocent about that, such things of evil and um yeah that's pretty much it uh, that's what i believe anyway um and secondly uh what was it alan parr david lynn alan parr alan parr so he made a video i think he's holding like a silver cup and he's like like this and he's talking about bethel music and saying that you know he doesn't he doesn't think and i'm not disagreeing with alan Parr. i love you mate I, thank you so much for your encouraging videos i think they're incredible i mean thank you for all the studying you do and the sharing your video your ministry praying for you but this particular video got to me where it's like um you shouldn't be singing these songs because it's about i me this and that you know and them declaring their testimony about their love for jesus and i'm thinking what doesn't it say though in the bible alan that in in the bible he's like you know uh, by the word of your testimony and by the blood of the lamb we're saved and we'll always be prepared to give an answer for the good news and the hope that you've received and when you read and study your bible we actually learn about the story of david it's about him and his life but we learn about him and his life like he himself and i meaning him 
we learn about God through David sharing his life, his relationship with God. It's how we can learn things about Jesus through his testimony, through his weaknesses and his strengths and his failures. It's about him. But when you read the Bible, is it really about him or is it about God? Hmm. Well, actually, I think it's probably about both. And God uses him and his life and his like um, when he's praying out about the Psalms. Timothy 2, all scripture is God breathes. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Body language had to just throw that in there. So, yeah. So you read about the book of Psalms, like um, when it's kind of like, you know, I was born in iniquity in my mother's womb. I was a sinner before I, when I was conceived. Or you read about how he... Uh, he goes, you know, a contrite heart and a broken spirit the Lord will not uh, despise. When he's crying out to God, you know, like when he struggled with lust or with, you know, murder, and he's like a man after God's own heart. But it's about him. Or when you read about other people like Moses, you read about his testimony, about how he, how he you know, got into certain situations, um, predicaments and places where he was. It was about him. But through sharing his testimony would help others come to know about God's way and why these people were included and uh, written down but god works through those scriptures through their testimony through those words so when you hear someone saying a song uh, you know it says you shall worship in spirit and in truth you know you can say when i was lost and i was broke amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me well isn't that a song about me but it's not just about me it's about the amazing grace which is being shared to share about testimony that would save a wretch like me so I believe sometimes we shouldn't be so harsh on the songs that are dedicated and put into things to be a blessing to praise our Father God in all circumstances. So when you're, if you're left all alone, you can sing through that. And um, yeah, hopefully, obviously trying to make this video. I don't know why every time it happens, I think it's an attack from the enemy. Uh, they can obviously hear that I'm preaching and teaching and trying to minister here. And whenever I do that, I just... I just oh. It's like the Apostle Paul. It's got like a messenger by itself to distract, to keep you humble. Thank you so much. Uh, basically praying for, um, anyway, so for some vision, normality, grace, mercy, obviously those things. Uh, your prayers are appreciated. Some normal people, uh, some friends who do the Bible and studying at a church would be nice. Praying for a new place and uh, employment, finances, etc. Uh, work, accommodation. That's where I'm at, at the moment. And um, yeah, where you at? Whatever you are, uh, don't forget pray read your bible uh, and spend time with the lord for god is good all the time and all the time god is good so don't give the enemy a, a foothold really see even when you're doing that i'll try and come in and you just pray it away and just um yeah so there are a few areas there might be a lot there so we're going from abraham blessed be his name forever the god of abraham isaac and jacob there is no other name that you can be saved um religion will never save you it's only by the sacrifice of jesus who died and came, uh, paid the price for your sins. Muhammad didn't die for your sins. He's not God, he's a human, he has earthly parents. Jesus doesn't have, didn't have earthly parents. Virgin birth, virgin birth. But then God gave him Mary and Joseph as his adoptive kind of earthly human parents. Um, whereas uh, Muhammad and people like that were actually had real parents when they were conceived by humans. Uh, whereas the Virgin Mary wasn't conceived by humans. It's a big indicator of something different about Jesus. So if you want to know more about that, read your Bible, go through the Gospels, try and find a good church, uh, worship in spirit and in truth. Uh, I believe that um, we shouldn't, who are you? I think it says in scripture, who are you to judge another man's slave, another man's servant? Um, you know, when they're working for the Lord, remember that God might be pleased with their song. You know, who am I to say, hey, maybe Father God, like, maybe like, yeah, that's got a good beat to it. Or maybe you might be like, that's really you know thank you for sharing your heart with me you know that's really loving and kind you know which one of you has a children you know we can have a couple of kids your kids come home from school and they're like hey dad daddy I, or, or mommy or whatever I, I made this for you look at this and they give you like a masterpiece and you're like wow that's like um you know it's amazing vase or that's incredible wow look at that that's actually really amazing and you could have another kid that maybe their ability is you know slightly a bit more simplified but it comes with such heart and with such sincerity and just like hmm uh, I, I know it's not much, but I spent like five hours making it, and I really wanted it to be great. <clears throat> and it's just like, wow, that's, that's, and actually, it could be like quite a novelty piece. Um, and maybe it stands out, and in in, in every, everybody else is making the vases all the same, but this one's quite slightly different. And sometimes, maybe Father God could, you know, is a God of diversity um, and variety, might actually be like, yeah, I, I'd rather have something that came with from your heart. And something that's just manufactured, you know, 
uh, on a mass production basis, but it doesn't have any feeling or you know heart behind it. So, um, you know, men look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Um, so if you can come to him um, in spirit and in truth with a contrite spirit and a broken spirit or something like that, it, you know, come to him as you are. And, um, you know, he's a loving father uh, and he's good. So hopefully that's what's on my mind and heart at the moment. Uh, so, yeah, that's it pretty much. Hopefully you enjoy the update and I'm praying for you all, whoever's watching this. Uh, lots of love. Try and pay attention to if you know about my playlist. Uh, uh, there's some really incredible guys in there who I would highly recommend because I believe that they generally have a sincere concern um, for your soul and your eternal salvation as well as mine otherwise they wouldn't be there so uh, the fact that they are um, just also is another expression of the greatness and goodness and kindness and generosity of our loving father um, who never gives up on us and has paid the price for our freedom and gives us an invitation for myself for you whoever's watching this to come to repentance throw off the old and to seek jesus whilst he may be found and to take up your cross and follow him in jesus name god bless thanks for watching and I'll speak to you in a bit boop